Hello there guys, welcome back to Shadowrun Dragonfall. We are in Beauclair's lab. Dun dun dun. We snuck in. Um, and we're probably going to get ganked as we go forward. So I'm going to I'm going to try not to run ahead of the party too much. But I bet when we open this door, all hell's going to break loose. <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, hello? Oh, I don't like this. It's so open. Oh, shit, son. Oh, shit. Who or what is that? Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, fuck, I did not see that guy. The old man behind the glass works feverishly at his console, glancing up at you when he can. A cigarette dangles from his mouth, its bluish smoke curling round his head. An overflowing ashtray sits on the table in front of him. The years have not been kind, but his features are instantly recognisable. Despite his age, he still has the strong chin and high cheekbones that you remember from Green Winter's DVD. This is Dr. Adrian Vauclair. As you approach, he stops what he's doing, a look of intense irritation on his face. He clears his throat and a harsh rasping sound emerges from the loudspeaker next to the glass. So you're the shadow runners that Audrun warned me about. I assume you've left a trail of corpses in your wake. And you must be Dr. Vauclair. That's right. He scowls. I don't know why you insist on interfering with my work, but I assure you, that's over now. He reaches down, flips a switch. You hear a loud thud and a click behind you as the door looks shut. Fuck. You'll find that the blast door behind you is sealed, and that the laboratory you occupy is fully secured. An important precaution. We keep our test subjects in there, and they are far more dangerous than you. He takes a drag on his cigarette. I won't permit you to cause any further harm, Shadowrunner. You remain trapped where you are for your own good. Wow. Can I, I, I'm not going to be able to break that glass, am I? Let's face it. Uh, what do you reckon? The, can I, it's not going to break, isn't it? Shit. What is he going to do, though? I don't think it's further harm, Shadow Runner. You remain trapped where you are for your own good. Hmm. Uh, let's, let's, let's try this. Do we want to do? He's not going to fucking talk to us, is he? Let's face it. Fuck. Okay, let's try and break the glass. Fuck it. The hell I will. You launch yourself at the window, your shoulder slamming into the hard surface with a heavy foot. Despite your best efforts, the window doesn't budge. Yeah, I figured as much. The window between us is made of dicote treated transplast. Wow. Do whatever you like to it, you'll find that it's quite unbreakable. The best is right. Nothing worth carrying can even scratch decote. The glass is essentially sheathed in diamond. We need military grade explosives to crack it. She frowns. We're stuck in here. Now, he fixes you with a level stare. I want to know why in the hell you're so violently interjected yourself into my business. First you break into my estate, which you didn't even know was mine, apparently. And then you spend what must have been a small fortune to track me down. You locate my AI, destroy it, then drive all the way out to the countryside. And finally, you shoot your way into my lab laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> he leans forward, hands on the table, his eyes narrowed into a piercing stare. So I have to ask you, Shadowrunner, who are you? Why in God's name are you here? Uh... Oh, you know, just shopping around. I always want to see you get underneath a giant castle. <laughs> nice. Um, we came to find you to help us stop the fish wingy. We could tell him that. Let's go with that. Vocalist sighs, covers his face with his pale nicotine stands. To help you stop for Schwingy. That is ironic. But yes, you are correct. I am the one who's been hunting you, the one who sent Apex and Audrin after you. You're going to pay for that, you bastard. Why attack the cruise bazaar? It was necessary to preserve the secrecy of my work, for the greater good of all. I know I have wronged you, and for this I am sorry. He sighs a long, rattling sigh that quickly turns into a violent fit of coughing. The sound echoes over the loudspeaker. He collects himself, continues. 
I don't expect you to understand, nor do I have time to explain it to you. He straightens, glances back at the screen to his side, and nods curtly. Now, I, I must know. How did you learn that I was still alive? How did you even know to look for me? Did someone send you? Oh, do we tell him? Uh... Do we want to, well, it, they all mention his brother. Let's tell him that his brother hired us. Fuck it. And we piece the rest together from his journals. Vocalist starts, and the sudden movement of his arm sends his overflowing asteroid flying from the table in a cloud of ash. My brother? Hermy? It's been years. Have you seen him? How is he? His brow furrows. He takes a step towards you impatiently. Well? Uh, you didn't know. You killed him too. <laughs> Somebody's pet hair fried his brain. His dignity deep piece of apex killed him. Uh, let's tell him that he killed him. You killed him too, just like Paul and Monica. He slumps into the chair next to him, his whole body shaking. I... I didn't. He's suddenly overcome by another fit of coughing. He steadies himself on one arm of his chair. Apex. <clears throat> he clutches his chest. I should never have trusted that thing. He closes his eyes and a tear traces its way down the gaunt hollow of his cheek. Oh, Hermie, the things I've sacrificed. All for this, all for panacea. All for tonight. Let's ask him about panacea. Your modified virus. What's tonight, Doc? What are you planning? He looks up, dazed, his eyes unfocused. Yes, yes, you know about it then. Panacea is my life's work, a permanent solution to an age-old problem. It will mean the end of the dragons. Not just for Schwingy, all dragons. Shit. Explain yourself, Doctor. Vauclair fumbles in his pockets, produces a fresh cigarette. He lights it with shaking hands and breathes in deeply. The orange glow of the cigarette flares bright. When he exhales, the words spill out with the smoke. The fire wing burned and murdered and caused untold damage in her bestial rage. Until the dragon fall. Until I stopped her. But that destruction was merely a symptom of a greater cancer. For Shwinky brought destruction with fire and claw. The dragons of today, Lofire, Dunkelzan, Celadir, they kill and conquer with subtler tools. Deception, manipulation, corruption. He spits with disgust. They use us as pawns, playing pieces, puppets in their millennia-long machinations. Oh yes, dragons are a cancer. One that will conquer, or worse, destroy all of humanity if we do not stop it. One that metastasized... Metastasized... What the fuck is that word? When the metastasized, yeah, metastasized when the world awakened. An ironic metaphor, since it was the falling of my own body that allowed me to see it. Failing, failing of my own body that allowed me to see it. Damn it. I'm an old man. <laughs> um, yes, let me guess. You have cancer. Late stage two. If I had to guess, I'd say leukemia. He's wrapped again by violent coughing, allows it to subside. Takes another long drag on his cigarette, the ash creeping closer and closer towards his mouth. Your friend is correct. I suffer from cancer of the blood, brought on by the radiation of the socks, no doubt. It was when I heard my doctor's diagnosis that I realised what I had to do. Take up smoking. It was the only way. <laughs> what my life's work would be in the time that I had left. I'm sorry, Hermie. I'm sorry you won't be able to see it for yourself. I'm sorry I failed you. Vauclair turns his attention back to the computer, stubbing out his cigarette. He grabs a fresh one from the pack and lights it. Jesus Christ, man. Fuck me. Tonight, I will release my panacea to the world. And how absurd that the instrument of dragonkind's destruction. He presses a button on the terminal and a large observation window at the far end of the room rises slowly open. Will be carried by Fershwingy herself. Oh my god, look at it. Holy shit balls. I don't know why, I kind of thought she was a green dragon, but holy fuck. Man, she's shackled in that place. So he's going to use the Fishwingi as the carrier for this panacea disease to take down all the dragons. I mean, I kind of understand why. Um, the dragons are definitely bad, but Jesus. Oh, fuck me. Just take a moment to appreciate this shit. That is cool. I like it a lot. 
Through the glass, you see the prostate prostrate form. <laughs> you see the prostate. Fuck me, you don't want to see that. Through the glass, you see the prostrate form of a dragon far below. An enormous set of shackles binds it, and a maze of tubes snakes into its body. The tubes connect to a cruel-looking apparatus that has been mounted to the wall. Son of a bitch. Look at that. He found her alive in the socks, after all. Tonight, the Firewing will fly again. Infected with panacea, she will slowly be destroyed from within. But before that happens, she will provide the catalyst for global transmission of the virus. Catalyst? What catalyst? As if spurred on by the sight of the dragon below, he begins typing furiously at his terminal. Fishwinky's fire will carry the agent in its dormant state. Any metahumans exposed will become carriers, will spread the disease to other dragons. Carriers will be infected with panacea as well, but it will not harm them. To non-dragons, it is a nuisance, nothing more. When a critical mass of carriers is achieved, my panacea will become unstoppable. It will spread across the globe in a relentless tide. However, if it does not reach this critical mass, it will fizzle, die out, become inert. Hence the need for a ground zero. A flashpoint for a mass infection event. He looks to the ceiling, mumbling to himself. I'm sorry, Hermie, I know how you loved your flux state, but that doesn't matter now. It must be Berlin. Wow, you're going to sick the fire wind on Berlin. He continues his work, filled with a feverish energy. To save the world, yes. For Panacea to work, Berlin must burn. A sacrifice, one for the greater good. Fishwingy will breathe her infected fire upon Berlin. Thousands will die, and through that destruction, the virus will take to the air. A critical mass of Berlin's metahuman population will be exposed, but no one will even think to quarantine the city until it's too late. The flux state lacks any centralised authority. Corporations will evacuate their own. Thousands will flee the city, infected. He mutters, his voice growing more detached. Oh yes, Hermie, Berlin is the perfect flashpoint. It wasn't supposed to happen tonight, no, but this little intervention of yours leaves us no choice. So let us see. He squints at his screen. Tonight's wind patterns dictate that Grand Zero be Tempelhof Schoenberg. Highly populated, the virus will spread quickly enough from there. It's only a few kilometres away from the cruise bazaar. The cruise bazaar? My favourite cafe is in the cruise bazaar. Look, you're crazy. And we're probably all gonna die, but we are not letting you get away with this. <laughs> Nonsense. You are sealed tight in the laboratory. Impotent to stop me. The old man eyes the cigarette butt in his hand, fishes out another one from the pack and lights it with the first. Then he returns to his console, reaching to the side for a microphone. He mutters something into the receiver. You can just barely make out the sound of the name Audrin. Oh, shit. When he turns to address you again, his voice is level. The shaking in his hand seems to have subsided. Security will be here soon, and they will take care of you. Do not worry, you will not be harmed. The sacrifice that I'm making tonight is unnecessary. I'll try that one again. The sacrifice that I'm making tonight is a necessary evil. It cannot be helped. But so long as you remain confined, I see no reason to kill you too. Uh, I hate to say it, dog, but I think that I agree with you. Um, how are you going to get for Schwingy to go along with this plan? Vauclair continues his work. No, oh, that. That's simple enough. If you look to my left, to the lady who's trapped in the chamber, I uh, think you'll find it's Fishwinky's daughter. I don't know, somehow. Like she has no choice. Holy shit. The gaunt woman in the containment cell stands rigidly, her face pressed against the glass, her haunted yellow eyes tracking your every move. She appears frightened, disoriented, lost. Her mouth moves silently, her voice muted by the glass cage. So, the stories Green Winters found were true. Fishwingy's astral form was separated from her body when she fell. Oh my god, that is Fishwingy's soul. You trapped her somehow. Yes, yes, but that came later. In 2012, we took down Fishwingy with an experimental weapon. This device, suffice it to say, I couldn't fully predict how it would affect her. In 2036, I led a search team into the socks. I had to know what really happened to the creature that I had slain. We found her alive, in a way. The dragon's astral form, her spirit, you might say, had been ripped from her body by the weapon. It was trapped inside a young woman living in the socks. A mob of glowpunks revered her, treated her like a goddess. I transported the young woman and the dragon's body here, where I could study them. You mean that she's been in that cell for almost 20 years? 
The old man nods absently. Mm, no choice. A creature separated from its astral form cannot live more than a few hours before both die. It was the highly intense. Blah, blah. It was the high intensity radiation of the socks, combined with the magical creature inside her, that allowed the woman to live for as long as she has. So, Vauclair seems almost eager to explain. The environment within her containment chamber mirrors that of the socks. It's allowed us to keep Fishwinky alive for all these years, while her bestial shell remains chained up below. <clears throat> Now, as for her physical form, that will be simple as well. We've drilled a series of electrical charges directly into her skull. When we release the Firewing's body, empty of her astral self, we will trigger all of the vicious instincts and primal urges left in her reptile brain. She will unleash her fire where we command it. Uh, I'd go insane if I was trapped like that for 20 years. He shakes his head. Misplaced empathy. The beast blazed a path of fire and destruction across Germany. But no matter, I have more important things to do than to debate the morality of this with you. A shrink it must fly, a balloon must be sacrificed, and it must be tonight. Now, where is that damned Audrin? It's mass murder. Yeah, you don't burn a city and call it sacrifice, you call it what it is. Mass murder. Vauclair stiffens, turns to face you. Anger washes across his face. Was it mass murder when America dropped the atomic bomb on Japan? The myopic would say yes, just as you are now. But they did it for a cause. To shorten the agony of war. To save the lives of thousands upon thousands of soldiers. The old man is trembling now. They do the same for the good of the world. Um... Ending a war and exterminating entire intelligent species are two very different things. Yeah, I mean, it, it is genocide. It is, it is genocide. And I, I, to be honest, I don't know enough about Shadowrun lore to know if all dragons are necessarily evil. I think the most of them are, but I don't know if there's any good ones. Um, so yeah, let's call it what it is, genocide. Don't be so self-righteous. We drive new species to extinction every single year on this planet. Dragons, at least, we have cause to destroy. Humanity was born to reproduce, to multiply, but dragons... Dragons were born to acquire, to accumulate, to hoard. Both strive to bend the world to their will. Humanity has conquered the air, land and sea through sheer numbers. Dragons, however, employ different means altogether. Throughout history, they have allowed us to do the heavy lifting while they pull the strings. And this is all true. <laughs> there are 17 great dragons in the world today. 17 ancient worms, millennia old, slowly dividing the planet into 17 piles of gold to nest upon in front of our eyes. Once upon a time, they burned castles to steal the treasure we collected, laid waste to entire armies. But here, here in the sixth world, it is no longer about tooth and claw and fiery breath. The old man's voice seethes with hatred. Now it's public relations, marketing, mergers and acquisitions. You see it every day, dragons on the tridio, in the boardrooms. They gather influence, wealth, power, continually hoarding, hoarding until one of them sits atop it all. Perhaps not in this cycle of the world, perhaps not the next, but one day, one worm will stand alone, triumphant, with all of humanity as its cattle, with all of the world as its prize. And that will probably be low fire, let's face it. <laughs> he trembles, his voice dropping to a whisper. That I will not allow. What if the virus mutates? Oh, this is good. Oh, I'm curious of this. We've got, we boosted our int for a reason. Let's fucking use it. An intelligent question from the Shadow Runner. Surprising. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to explain it to you in detail. And since you are locked in that laboratory with no chance to escape, I don't really need to. But understand this. I'm an expert in my field. That is not an idle boast. It is a certifiable fact. And I have worked with nearly unlimited resources for over 40 years focused on one goal. One. 42 years of isolation, of secrecy, dead to the world, dead to my brother, all for this, my life's mission. It will work, he looks down. I promise you, Hermie, it will work. And the because I said so defense, very professional. He shoots you an icy stare. Say what you like, it matters little to me. A panacea will change the world. In the end, you will thank me. Um, uh, 
Uh, you're not infallible. You've already made mistakes and people died. Let's try that. Bokeh looks amused. Mistakes? He uses the tip of his cigarette to gesture at the glass. So says the career criminal trapped in the containment room. Uh, number of deaths over the years, Doc? He pauses. We have suffered losses, yes. They were tragic, but the people here accepted that there would be risks. They made their own choices. I won't take the blame for that. Uh, basic lapses in lab safety, yeah. We'll go with that. He glares at you through the glass. Is there some point that you're trying to make, or were you just trying to anger me? <laughs> yeah, mostly I was just hoping to piss you off. Um... Roll the dice with a biological weapon, or... Yeah, let's go with that one. People make My point is everyone makes mistakes, even you, and yet you want to roll the dice with a biological weapon. It will work, I'm telling you. Yeah, you told your researchers their lab would be safe too. Look how that turned out. Muscles at the corners of his mouth tighten. Why am I even talking to you? You are trapped in there, and I've still got work to do. Audra will be here for you soon enough. The old man turns away from you, studying some invisible detail on his console. Hmm, this plan of yours killed your brother. Was it really worth it? Vokler's fist slams into the table, sending his cigarette flying in a cascade of sparks and ash. No! Nothing can make that right. Nothing. <sighs> he runs a hand through his unkept hair, blinking through a haze of sudden tears. Damn it, Hermie, why couldn't you just let me go? Uh... Listen to reason, Vauclair. Would Hermie want you to do this? You did not know my brother, Shadowrunner. Do not presume to speak to me on his behalf. Hermie? Hermie would support me in this if he knew what I know. I watched hours of your brother's video footage, Vauclair. I probably knew better than anyone alive except yourself. His face twists into an ugly sneer. You've watched footage, and that makes you think that you know the man. You know nothing. I know that he wanted you to stop all this years ago. He begged you to, and you promised him that you'd try. Vauclair falls silent. A wisp of smoke traces its way from the tip of his cigarette to the ceiling. He's right, Vauclair. Your brother died trying to save you. If you don't turn back from all this, his death will have meant nothing. Nothing at all. That's enough. Hermes' death was a tragedy. I will not let you use it to manipulate me. Vauclair straightens. I say you've touched a nerve. His entire body is trembling with fury. He takes a deep breath to calm himself. Uh, actually, I've just been messing with you. No. Uh, if you succeed at this, eliminating dragons will create a dangerous power vacuum. He's not going to buy any of this. We're just going to tell him he's nuts. But let's see what happens. He laughs. A pointless argument. Any power vacuum created through Dragon Crime's extermination will be filled by meta humanity. Any backlash will right itself over time. I'm playing the long game, Shadowrunner. One that has played out over thousands of years. When you think on that scale, everything seems possible. Humanity will endure, and the dragons will perish. Ah, you're nuts. I guess voice is low and menacing. You don't want to do this, Vauclair. There has to be a better way. Vauclair stops, bows his head, and closes his eyes. I'm a man of science, Shadowrunner. A better path may exist, but I do not know what it is. I wish that I didn't have to sacrifice so many. I wish. I wish that Hermie hadn't had to die. But the solution is here, now, in my hands, and I choose to take it. Through the speakers, you can hear the sound of heavy footsteps approaching. Audrin, you're on the wrong side, mate. What are you doing? Ah, oh, Audrin. Good, it's about time you showed up. Sorry, Doctor. We were waking up the dragon's physical form. It required some care. With procedures ready to begin now, you should see to it. The orc sneers at you from behind the glass, his scarred features writhing in the dancing light of Vauclair's monitor. Looks like you trapped the thugs who were attacking the manor. Yes, they won't be a problem any longer, but with Apex gone, our security is still compromised. We'd best still hurry. Oh, and Audrin, don't forget to clean the containment units afterwards. The virus will kill for Shrinky along with the rest, and when it does, our astral form will perish as well. Human host or no. We're going to stop you, Vauclair. We'll find a way. Agus's lips curl into a snarl. 
and we'll make it painful. Audrin twists suddenly towards the glass. Quiet! Everything's ready in the chamber, Dr. Vauclair. I think you should start the procedure yourself. Vauclair brings his cigarette to his mouth and inhales sharply, holding it for a long moment. Yes, my friend. He looks to the ceiling. It is time, Hermie. Let's do some good. Vauclair stubs out his last cigarette with a heavy sigh. I'll begin the infusion process. Aldrin, please make sure our guests here are securely locked away before you come down. I am sorry, Slick. How did you know my name? Uh, I am sorry, Slick. Sorry for your friend, Paul Amsel. Sorry for Frau Schaefer. Sorry for the Crow's ba uh, Cruise Bazaar. Sorry for Berlin. I wish there was another way. Uh, Messiah Complex, maybe? That's not bad. Uh, you sound like a dragon. Ooh, that's good. You're not the same man who wouldn't save Germany from the fire wing. Uh, still time? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh man, I wish. I really want to say that. Um... Hmm. I like the comparison to the dragons. That is quite good. I think we'll go with that. An elaborate plan to destroy an entire species and massive underground fortress with an army of mercenaries. You sound just like a dragon, Doc. Fire flashes in Vauclair's eyes. His back straightens. And what do you presume to know of dragons? I have spent my entire life studying them. Um, then you should see my point. You're acting like one. Perhaps, perhaps I am, but for one difference. I'm a man. I'm finite. A man can gather power, wield it for his lifetime, but nothing more. His work will fade, lost to the inevitable entropy that decays all. Oh, he may create a dynasty that will stand for a time, but his dust will not reap its benefit. Vauclair's voice is steady now. For a moment, his age, illness, and fatigue fall away. Dragons. Dragons are immortal. That time means little to them. What they will, they will, and no power can truly stop them unless it is death itself. War, plague, famine, natural disaster, setbacks. Merely setbacks. Avarice eternal. No, Shadowrunner. I am not one of them. No more than you are. <clears throat> Vauclair looks down for a long moment, then turns and exits the room. Well, shit. Audrin turns to stare at you through the glass, his lips curl into an instant smile. Hi again. Long time. How's Amsel doing? That hole in his brain pan heal up okay? Glory fixes the orc with a cold stare. Taunt all you want. If we get out of here, you wish you'd never set foot in the cruise bazaar. <clears throat> the burned orc knocks on the heavy transplass window separating you. Afraid that's not going to happen. This lab's locked down tight, like the doc said. The test subjects that they keep in there don't play well with others. Dangerous, nasty things. And they don't smell great either. But you'll see for yourself in a second. Um, you probably got family in Berlin, Audrin. You don't want to see them die, do you? Dr. Vauclair's my family asshole. He's a great man, a man of vision. And I'm going to make sure that his vision becomes reality. He checks the monitor. Listen, I gotta go. Have fun with the test subjects while I'm gone. He grins and flips the switch on the console. You hear the hiss of doors sliding open nearby. If you're still alive when I get back, I'll put a bullet in you or something. Bye, Audrin. Bye, everyone. And a boy, oh, shit, what is that? Oh no, it's a fire drake. Oh shit, okay, well, I'm gonna run straight round there. What is that? Medical, medical supplies! Medical supplies! Glory, get over there, quick! Advanced med kit, that was it, that was the medical supplies. Fuck you, game. Fuck you so much. Okay, this thing's in the open, so let's give it the old burst fire. Not terrible. Uh, Glory. I'll come back to you. 
I go. I'll put I group here. That's pretty good. Can we increase increase chance for critical damage? Let's try this. Seventy five percent. Oh, you fucking spooned it, Iger, you noob. Okay. Uh, Blitz is going over there because he needs to be out of the way. And Glory. I guess we'll put Glory over here for now. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Okay. That was bad. Okay. Uh, let's start with Iga. Let's get an interdiction shot on this fucker. It's pretty good. And we'll take her aimed. Okay. I'm going to take more shots at this guy. And then we're going to bring Blitz. Uh, bring him around this side. Uh, and take an aimed. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, let's send Glorian for a slash. He's not quite going to bleed out from that. Let's give him another one. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck this. Oh, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay, uh, Glory can probably handle this one on her own now. I'm hoping. Stun him, stun him, Glory. He is... Mm, he's stunned, he's stunned. Phew, okay. Uh, right, Iger. Shitting hell, what do we want to do? Um, another one's going to come out of there, isn't it? Let's face it. So I probably want to move Iger up here. That's one. Uh, what have we got? This is the one with increased crit, but only 69%. We'll take a steady shot. I don't have line of sight, so I'm going to shoot that one. And blitz. Gonna mark that guy. Son of a bitch. Okay, he might bleed out if we're lucky. Uh oh god he missed. Thank God for that. Okay, how much health has this one got? Uh it doesn't say. Okay, let's get Blitz to shoot him. I should probably have moved Glory first, but never mind. Uh, then I can run Glory up. I'm going to put her up there. Uh, I have no line of sight. Good. That was a fucking good one. That didn't do an awful lot. That was terrible. Uh, what else? That's a free action to use the tactical reload. So I guess we'll just take a normal shot on one of these. And then I'll have to move up. 
I haven't got eyes on that one. But it was good damage. Move Blitz up. Switch gun. Oh, he can actually hit these guys. Uh, let's... He's only got one, so I don't really want to waste his mark again. I'd rather take a shot. Let's take an aimed on this one. Okay. Right. Glory's going to start dealing with this guy. Five HP per round. He's still got plenty left, though. Um, I can shoot him. Okay. Uh, do I need to heal? I probably am okay. Okay, I'm going to stay where I am and just reload. Uh, Blitz is now going to mark it. I'm going to take some shots. Iger is going to tactical reload. Why does it not reload? It doesn't reload anything. Why does it not reload them? I don't understand why that doesn't work. Reloads all equipped weapons and yet it fucking doesn't. It's really annoying. Oh, that was a good shot. It's not quite dead, but that was a good shot. Sweet. Oh my god, we fucking did it. Wow. Well, we can talk to the strange woman. However, uh, we should probably make a save right there, because my god, we are over time. That was a long episode. Um, Vauclair, man, his fucking plan. It is crazy. Uh, let's just make sure that this definitely saved, because I don't want another repeat of that Apex thing. Uh, 23rd, yeah, that's today. That is today. Okay, cool. Right, well, oh, exciting stuff. I think we're about to get into the, the real meat of this when we talk to what remains of the Firewing over there. Um, but you'll have to wait till next week to find that out, because this is where I'm going to leave it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.